evening everybody and how are we all doing on this lovely Sunday evening? Now I had you see me earlier today, I was roasting and uh, very, very hot, lack of sleep, very tired. Luckily, in about the last hour and a half, a bit of cloud cover has came over and a little shower, which has really just cooled things down and made it so much more pleasant, so much more pleasant. So very, very happy with that change in the weather, although not enough rain to really sing home about. Certainly didn't add anything to our water butts. Now, today we are going to be discussing what winter veg are you growing this year and what have you already sowed? This is a a topic that is quite important at the moment. I know here we are in the middle of summer, or the beginning of summer actually, not really thinking about winter, but it is the time that we need to sow and think ahead. We'll get into that in just a moment. First of all, let's see if anybody is out there. And We've got Tarbay Stream saying, good evening, Fed Podcasters. Good evening to you. Adrian is also out there. Uh, good evening to you. Um, Belicillian is out there. Hello all. Where's the rain? Burnt to a crisp up here in Belfast. We've had a tiny shower, but I know how you feel. Oracle is there. What about everyone and my friend Stuart Jackson on the other outlet? Hope you've had a good week, mate, and hope you've had a good sale. Stuart, if you are watching, don't tell us anything about the sale just yet. Uh, you will get a prompt a little bit later on. So just keep it to yourself for the time being. It'll make sense in a bit moment. Uh, Gary Fiddler is out there. Hi, everyone. I'm watching along with the family tonight. Hello, Gary, and hello to your family. We will be on our best behavior tonight because you are there. We're always on our best behavior, of course. So, Philly SBB, hello, everyone. Good evening to you. Kate Spratt is out there. Good evening, Veg Army. Good evening to you. Uh, Hargrave Gas, evening all. Hope you've had a good week. Please don't come inside for the podcast. It's way too hot. Know how you feel. Indeed. Uh, Graham Arnold is out there. Evening all. Good evening to you. Um, Bally Sue, Richard, what's your plot tour earlier? Your plot is getting very productive. Yes, put a plot tour of the allotment video out earlier today. Certainly aiming to get it very, very productive at the moment. It's certainly getting there. Uh, Sarah Dolby is out there. Good evening. Good evening to you. Lovely to see you. Anna Jones, good evening, Gardeners. Good evening to you. Anna Castalis, hello from Canada. I've got a lovely video coming up from Canada a little bit later on as well. Uh, Stuart Jackson, evening, Richard and Veg Army. Good evening to you. Ian Beddows, evening all. Only I can think of is growing older. Only thing, oh, but <laughs> growing throughout the winter, he's growing old, of course. Digwell, hi all, good evening to you. Uh, Scott Ambler's joined. Hello to everyone. I hope you've enjoyed the nice weather. It's been too hot. Uh, Sarah has also said, We had a bit of rain here in Portsmouth this afternoon. Yes, I'm up just not far from you, and it, yeah, a little bit of rain, not much, but it's just made all the difference and cooled things down. Uh, Turbo Extreme says it's been very hot here this weekend, 30 degrees C yesterday and 31 for a bit this afternoon. We hit 29 C here, I saw. Hot enough, hot enough. Um, Jenny is out there. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. Pathetic amount of rain and still muggy. Hoping it may rain sometime more. Indeed, I hope it will too. Uh, Nigel, money boots, listening on the plot whilst doing some proper weeding, <laughs> making the most of the, the evenings at the moment, of course. Um, Stuart Jackson says he's had lots of rain in the last 24 hours. Lucky you, lucky you. And Graham has said, I've just made a potato salad with my nickel of new potatoes. Obviously, you've been harvesting some potatoes. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, Chili Kate has joined. Good evening to you. And uh, Joan says, no flash floods in the northeast. In fact, not a drop of rain here. Hopefully it's going to come your way. Uh, Kate is saying it's been far too hot to any garden, do any garden, and I agree with that. Yes, it has been far too hot. So the garden's still going to be there is what I always say. Andrew Noyce has joined us from Croatia, and it's another rainy day there. People here tell me it always rains in England. It's not at the moment. Not at the moment. Anyway, so that has got the roll call up to date. Please do, if you are new to the show, please do let us know you're watching. Please do join in the conversation. The whole idea of this is to get us all talking. So winter veg, this is the, the subject that we're going to be talking about. I did a podcast on this uh, a couple of weeks ago, funny enough. And the idea, you know, I always say it's no good to think about 
your winter veg come autumn, winter time, you want to be thinking about it now. And in fact, things like Brussels sprouts and leeks need to be sown already and in, in the ground. So in some ways, it's maybe a little bit too late for certain winter vegetables, but there's still time for many, many other winter vegetables. And it's very important to get those going now. I always believe gardening is about thinking ahead and thinking about what's going to happen. And we've got to enjoy what we've got, of course, but we've got to think six, eight, 10, 12 months ahead at all times. So let's start off this, this conversation then with my question to you, what winter veg are you growing? So uh, what have we got? Scott Ambler, it's been overcast here for the past few weeks, so I'm enjoying the change. Yeah, I mean, I'll just be glad for a bit cooler weather, I'll be honest. I didn't get any sleep last night. It was so hot. Turbo Stream, I've been going to the plot at 7.15am. So lovely to sit and watch the bees on my flower patch this morning while I sip my coffee. Now eating a few strawberries from the plot. I'm with you on that. I tend to go out in my garden in the morning and... You know, half six, seven o'clock in the morning, I'm out there now. Roxy comes out with me. We have a bit of a play, but we also tend to the garden. We we tidy things up. We Obviously, we've got to be quiet because we don't want to disrupt the neighbours. But, you know, it's the best time of the day. I find it very productive. It sets you up for the day as well. I just find that sort of hour before I go to work, just doing a bit of gardening, just really clears the mind and gets me energised for the day, as well as feeling like I've accomplished something before even leaving the house. You know, a bit of weeding's done, watering's done. Uh, I haven't got to worry about it when I get home. That's my theory is as well. Um, Gary says, is it too late to sow Brussels? I would say so, particularly if you want them for Christmas. Uh, really, Brussels is sort of January, February, March, April, maybe at a push, May, to get them sowed. But don't worry, you can still go to a, down to a garden centre and buy some plug plants or some young plants and get those planted. So it's not, not the end of the world. Uh, Jenny says, how many weeks have you all been without rain? Apart from today's little sprinkle, it's been over five, week, five weeks. And from memory, the last rain wasn't worth having. I think the last time I had rain was in towards the end of April. I don't remember any rain at all during, um, during May at all, from memory anyway. Turbo stream. My winter veg normally consists of parsnips, but this year is proving difficult. I hardly have Hardly any have germinated so far. I think I will be buying 19p ones on Christmas Eve this year. And with you on the parsnips, that's something I've failed again this year to get germinated. Uh, same as carrots and a few other things that we're having a lot of trouble with. I've got to, it's going to be too late for parsnips, but I'm going to retry doing some carrots, certainly. And it's a shame. I like homegrown parsnips. Tastes so much better, but we will we'll do our best. I uh, did think of you dig well, says Graham, while I was making mine. I did two parts mayonnaise, one part sour green, and a handful of chopped chives. Talking about the potato, excuse me, potato salad. Of course, we are all, um, all, all, well, I'm starting to harvest my first early potatoes. So potato salad is something I'm really enjoying, to say the least. Uh Oracle says beds will be closed down, unfortunately. Not worth trying to grow anything over the winter at my age. You feel the pain. That's fair enough. Uh, I mean, I always try and encourage people to grow all year round. It is, uh, for me, a way to self-sufficiency. But, of course, wintertime, it is a lot harder to get out into the garden. I mean, my allotment is very difficult to get to on the win in the winter. So I'm with you. I understand your point there completely. Lucky enough, because I have a garden as well, I tend to do a lot of garden, a lot of home growing too. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I'm only growing the seeds from a supporters club this year, then use the ideas at school. Hopefully, yes, the, the supporters club, the seeds that I send out each month. So, um, does good, does good. Um, hopefully it, it, it works out for you. Uh, Ian Beddows, what can I sow mid-July when I, we get home? Because uh, Ian's lives in Manchester, but he's currently in, is it Spain or Portugal? I think it's Spain, if I remember correctly. Uh, mid-July, there's going to be quite a few. Uh, lettuce, you'll get your newsletter next month. Have a look on that. that, that that's what I'll say. 
there'll be plenty of options though. But if you're looking for your winter veg for July, kale would be one to lean towards. Kale, certainly. Uh, we had some rain yesterday, but enough to do anything for the garden. Like our rain today, just not enough um, rain at all. Just not enough rain at all. I mean, it's barely made any difference to my water butts. Um, so, oh, I've added a new water butt to my collection yesterday as well. Uh, you'll hear more about that tomorrow. Jenny says, winter brassicas like Brussels and purple sprout and etc. cetera grow in for winter, but lots of veg for storing like swede, pumpkin and squash, beans for drying and freezing broccoli. Yeah, Brussels and purple sprouting are two that I have on my list. Again, these are what I call the long-term plants. So I tend to start mine January to March for both Brussels and purple sprouting. But I would say, you know, they're going to be in the bed I've got those in the beds at the moment down on the allotment, but they are in the bed for a long time. They're what I call those year long in the ground, Brussels sprouts and purple sprouting, you know, they're year long plants in my opinion. So yeah. Uh, Sarah Dolby, none of my parsnip seeds germinated either, two separate sowings and nothing. It's been a funny year. It's a lot of things have been having problems. So completely with with you on that uh rebecca has joined a good evening everyone sorry i'm late richard just hoping home from some open gardens very enjoyable day says rebecca i was going to go to a a a uh, nursery open day one of the largest nurseries in the uk um but because of a lack of sleep and i was too hot roxy was too hot decided not to go anywhere stayed at home instead um Scott says, I've never been grow successful growing sprouts, and they are my favorite this year. It's looking so good, so fingers crossed. Yeah, I'm with you on that, with you on that, you know. Um, sprouts this year do look to be doing very, very good. Uh, what have we got? Turbo Stream says, I sowed a few January king cabbage last week and a butternut squash from a supporters club. Got to grow along coming up with that a little bit later on. Um on the, the, the subject of parsnips, Digwell says his chitted or pre-chitted parsnips are growing well. Direct sown seeds are rubbish. So Digwell, share a bit more information on how you pre-chitted them so that perhaps some of us can try and use that for the next year. Uh, Andrew Norris is saying the same with me. Three rows of parsnips and not a single one has came up. Very disappointing. Yeah, parsnip seems to be one that struggle this year. I expect farmers are possibly, if we're all having the same trouble, farmers are going to have the same. So expect high costs of parsnips in the supermarket around December. Nigel, Muddy Boots, just saying my second batch of winter veg, cabbage and cauliflower. Germination of the first lot was a complete failure. So I, I sowed, uh, on that note, I sowed some cabbage, was it last week or the week before, uh, my winter cabbage. And a bird came along and, and must have shifted all the compost out of there. So I've got to re-sow them. Uh, but I'm also going to be doing cauliflowers as well. I've got quite a few things that I'm going to be doing um but i want to hear from you guys more than more than that <coughs> excuse me nicola evening richard and all sorry i'm a little late no problem lovely to see you and jim m it's approaching two months without rain here in bedfordshire my heavy straw mulch is really paying off because the soil is still nice and moist under there yeah everyone knows i love a good mulch for me the mulch is i, I use grass clippings but straw works just as well it's such a good thing to do um for 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 your plants mulch 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 and then mulch some more uh chili kate says we've had reasonable germination with our parsnips also got brussels sprouts and leeks so far plan to get some carrots beetroot and cabbages in too so leeks is another one on my list again they're one i think it's possibly a bit too late to sow leeks now but again if you haven't got any that you've already sown run down to garden center and you'll be able to get them from there um where i'm i haven't planted my leeks out they're still in their containers but i'm harvesting my first early potatoes at the moment and my leeks will end up going where my first early potatoes are for me that's just a good way of trying to use a space so that something comes out something else goes in um, i think it's very important i mean i i consider myself lucky with the amount of space that i have but I still want to make sure I use every single bit of it. 
when do we sow cauliflower for an autumn slash winter harvest? So if you're looking for cauliflower for a winter harvest, uh, you want to be sowing it May, uh, uh, June, July. For an autumn, April, May. Um, it's cauliflowers are one of the hardest vegetables, in my opinion, to grow. And they, I find if they're to get an autumn harvest can be pretty tricky because they tend to bolt over the summer. The summer ones, again, they can have a tendency to bolt, but it, you can do it if you are checking on them on a daily basis. And but literally, if they are ready, you harvest them that day. Don't leave them. Um, Digwell also, also said, I've had many whole packs of seeds found me this year. Seeds or compost? No idea. Yeah, but Nigel goes on to say 100% germination or 32 stations of direct sown gladiator parsnips. He's one of the lucky ones. <laughs> and Digwell says, I can go off people <laughs> for that. Yeah, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you on that. Um what else have we got? Graham Arnold, hopefully not the deadly hot pickled onions. To dig well, talking about the recipes and the cooking going on there. Sarah, I have purple sprouting broccoli growing. Forgot last year and missing them. Yeah, I mean, I love purple sprouting broccoli, but it is a long-term plant. It does take up the bed for quite a while, but it's so worth it for that. that they're usually ready during that hunger gap, aren't they? They're ready when you really need that food. Um, and one of my favourites as well, so full of flavour. They look pretty. Just a fantastic one to have. I usually put them in the same bed as my Brussels sprouts as well because it just seems to make sense. Uh, Turbo Extreme says, I sowed the third batch of French beans this weekend. Hopefully third time lucky. Usually freeze them for winter. Bean, a lot of people are having troubles with beans this year. Beans and peas, carrots and parsnips seems to be the, the ones where people are struggling with. Uh, Belly Cillian says, over winter my polytunnel will be full. Salads outside, brassicas, onions, etc. And empty beds with filled beans as green manure. I didn't even write green manures down, actually, because that's something that, not necessarily a winter veg, but that's something that I will be doing is a lot of green manures as my beds become empty as we go into that sort of winter period. And there's no time to get anything in there that is edible. Green manures and go in, field beans, basilia, clover, uh, mustard, even. They will take up that empty space and just try and add a bit of goodness to the soil. Not easy, um, but it's it's one of my favorite things to effective gardening. Um, do, 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 what else have we got? Um, Jenny says, I have my bales on order. I'm hoping to grow in some and use as a mulch. It's worth it. I mean, I'm trying straw bale gardening at the moment, as you've no doubt seen. And it, it's proving quite interesting. The tomatoes are definitely doing okay. The peppers and chilies are doing okay. Peas and carrots didn't germinate at all. Um, yet the, the the brassicas haven't done anything since planting them. So it, it's interesting to say the least. Uh, Rebecca says, my beetroot looks like it's having problems this year. The leaves are curling and going yellow. Is that too much watering or not enough? The fact that they're curling in yellow would suggest to me a little bit too much watering. Um, but I'll let anybody else answer that. In my opinion, that sounds like too much water. Um, Turbo Stream has planted out his Brussels sprouts a couple of weeks ago. Excellent. And Sarah, I have a couple of butternut squash plants, one bush type. Uh, butternut squash is a good a good one to grow, actually. Um, I, I'm i still... We've got two butternut squashes left over from last year's harvest, and they're still perfectly good. They're just on the kitchen worktop, not doing anything. Uh, so I don't know when Digra wrote this, but uh, I just scatter the, the parsnip seeds on damp tissue and sow each one as it starts to show germination, tweezers required. This was about pre-chitting or pre-starting, if you like, the parsnip seeds to get good germination. I'm going to give it a try next year, I think. Um, it's just been such um, such a problem. Uh, 
Nigel has said, if a bird pinched my seed, I would tell her to buy her own. I uh, they don't listen, do they, though? Birds just don't listen to us men. Um, yeah. Uh, Scott, good question. So what is winter cabbage? Is it things like Savoy? Uh, Savoy can be a winter cabbage. It, it, it's not so much the particular type. It's the variety more than anything. So earlier, Turbo Extreme mentioned January King. That's a, a winter cabbage that would be ready in January. So um, what you want to do when it comes to it is just look on the packet and just see when it says it can be harvested. Um, that's I feel, is always the best way to be safe because you could go for the standard cabbage and round head cabbage and it could still be uh, a summer cabbage or even an a, a autumn cabbage. So just check that, spring cabbage even. Stuart Jackson says, I've lots of leeks and Brussels sprout seedlings. Also, my parsnips didn't do great with the ones I did in the ground. I need a paper pots work for him this year. So what Stuart does there, as we've said before, is he's, he plants his seeds in paper pots to get them going, particularly parsnips and carrots. So that's a good thing to start off with. Um Bally Seedling says, I had to cover my seedbed this year with a dry weather before seeds could germinate. The wee birds were using it as a soil bath. Yeah, the birds, this year birds are problematic. Not so much eating, but certainly delving into pots. Um, note down in the memory bank. Hopefully the info comes back out in time to remember to sow the cauliflower in early July. Yep. Yeah, um, trying to think what I'm sending out in July. I can't remember if there's cauliflowers in it. Um, but yeah. And says, my mate successfully germinated cauliflowers and then the pigeons ate her seedlings. That's annoying, isn't it, when that happens? Cover everything, um, especially when young. I mean, I hate putting nets over. We spoke about this last week, but it does do a job. Uh, oh, cool. It is asking, is Stuart ever sorted the pear tree out and tied bottles on it? Like I said, that's a question we, we asked him. So on that note of Stuart Jackson, let's go to our first video, shall we? It seems like a good, good point to have a break. Um, keep your ideas coming in of uh, what winter vegetables you are growing. Let's go to this. Okay, guys, we're off to a little village called Oaksey. Um, it's up on the way to Swindon, really. It's not far from where I used to work, Ashton Keynes. Um, yeah, we've got to see our mate Stuart. He's doing a plant sale for a brain tumour charity. And uh, I've got some plants to take to him. So I'll have a quick chat. Maybe have a bacon butty or something. Uh, let him get on with it. Road trip for Digwell. <laughs> The last time I went out, this time in the morning. <laughs> uh, what is it now? Eight o'clock just gone. Yeah. Transit time today will be approximately 38 minutes. And along the way, we will see some fantastic scenery. Rural Gloucestershire. Looks like there's loads of fags there, and I reckon <coughs> we are here. Oh, yeah. Here we are then. <laughs> Here we are now, as a yeah. gimbal. Here we are now, my old mucker Stuart. Here, oh. I, can't, I can't get the screen up at the same time. Look. 
So, uh, yeah, here we are. Back Dig well on tour. Dig well on tour. So, here we are then. Brain Tumor Charity Sale. Look at that. Well, there you are. Just a very quick look and a very light-hearted look at the excellent work Stuart and his team do. Oh, raising money for the uh, the Brain Tumor Charity. Fantastic. Right then, it's getting a bit busy now there. Um, time for me to skedaddle back to the Shire before the uh, ring wraiths come looking for me. Back to the safety of my little hobbit hole. Yeah, well done, mate. And I'm sure Stuart will let us know how much he makes uh, later on tonight. See if I can't pop back there in July. Back at Digwell Acres. Looks like it's busy here as well. <laughs> oh, sweet home. Home is not where you live, it's where they understand you. There we go, we could tell which one was Digwell's house as soon as we saw the, the, the food growing on the front there. But Stuart, how much did you raise from that plant sale? Uh, it was so great to see you guys meet up. Um, let us know in the comments how well you did. That's obviously all for the Brain Tumor Charity that uh, Stuart tries to raise a lot of money for. Uh, Stuart says we are still waiting for our man to do the pear tree. And he says, I think you were speeding there, Digwell. So uh, looking good. Plants look great, says Chili Kate. And Kate says, great road trip, Dig and uh, great road, road trip, Digwell, and well done, Stuart. Um, <laughs> Andrew, uh, home is not where you live, but where they understand you. I really like that, indeed. And Jenny says, great video, Digwell, Stuart, amazing. Anna Jones, great video, thanks, Digwell and Stuart. So hopefully, um, uh, Digwell does say it's great to meet up with Stuart and the team So we'll give Stuart a chance to let us know how much money he raised um, Where were we with the comments? Now Nicola is saying about the French beans She's had about 30 plants to get in this week I've got a few French beans to get in this week as well, funny enough Andrew says, uh, if you have not discussed green manures before That would be useful. The quality of my peel, veg field really needs improving. Very clayey, if that's a word. I've made a note of green manures on the uh, um, list of potential subjects. So that's something we will do in the future. Turbo Stream says, I sowed field beans this year to save the seed for green manure. Seed daft to keep buying the seed. Might try the pods compared to my board beans. Worth it. Yeah, worth it. I do like field beans. I think they are great to, to use as a green manure. Very good at adding nitrogen to the soil and also breaking up that hard clay soil that we do suffer with. He also goes on to say, I had to pull my red winter onions too. They had all rotted. Might not bother with onions again. Onions are always a bit problematic. Uh, my overwintered onions are nearly ready, but the spring sown ones are looking a little, little bit on the small side. Um, uh, Graham is asking, did Ralphie's tried the Casablanca potatoes yet? No doubt swimming in butter. Delicious Casablanca, aren't they? Absolutely delicious. Uh, we're, right. Um, so here's the big reveal. 
Stuart has sold £260p plus another £80 from his house this week. £280 in plant sales in a week alone. That's good. Good. Great week for charity, everyone. Indeed. Fantastic. Good to see. Um, you know, there's a lot of money. People want to buy plants. And, it, and I've noticed lately that the price in supermarkets or, or garden centers, plants seem to be very expensive for, you know, obvious reasons. There's a lot going on and I'm not denying them anything like that. But if you can sell any of your excess plants, make a few quid at the same time, then why the hell not? Indeed. Indeed. Uh, well done, Stuart. This is Stream. Indeed. So let's go back to winter veg that we should be sowing now to get us through the winter. We've mentioned cabbages. We've mentioned cauliflower. We've mentioned leeks. We've mentioned sprouts and purple sprout and broccoli and green manure. There's one that I haven't actually seen anybody mention, and it's one that I quite like, but I think it is a bit of an unusual one, and that's kale. Now, kale, I will be sowing, I might be sowing it later on today, actually, but it, it's one that I do really like to grow. It's great. I use it in smoothies. I try and pick it fresh. It's it's one that you can grow a lot of, but it needs to be in the ground before sort of end of July to make sure it will get through the winter. But you can sow them right up to the September as well. Um, so I'm amazed nobody's mentioned kale, but that's one I want to throw out, out there as well. We've got parsnips, which have been a failure for most people, for, well, for many people by all accounts. Uh, Scott says, you can eat the field bean tops too, so I've heard. Not try green manure before. How will it work with no dig? Do you just chop them down and leave them? Yes. Basically, you just chop them down. Chop and drop if you like. Just chop them down and leave them. I have heard you can eat the field bean tops as well. I've never tried it myself, but it's something to think about. Certainly something to think about. Um, well done, Stuart. So glad to help, says Digwell. Indeed. Yep. Uh, Jenny says, oh, I love kale. I have three or four varieties. I'm with you on kale. It's such an unsung hero. You know, to me, they taste similar to cabbage. But when you harvest cabbage, you've got to use that entire head in pretty much a week's time. I find kale just being able to pick a few leaves as and when to be a little bit better for for our, our needs. Personally, I find anyway. Uh, Ballycillian says, <laughs> overwintered spring onions. When would you, uh, it's a good one. When would you sow the spring onions for overwinter? I'm going to add that in a note here. But that is a good one. Um, Digwell says, I avoided mentioning cows. I cannot abide it. Fair enough. I know, and Bally Cillian says the same. I hate it. Uh, yuck. Fair enough. No, it's not to everyone's taste, but then people don't like Brussels sprouts, and I love Brussels sprouts. Stuart Jackson says, I popped into our local garden centre. Tomato, £6. We were selling tomatoes for just £1. Most of our plants are priced, so we don't take any home. Thanks for all the support. £6 for a tomato plant. I mean, it, it's it's understandable with everything going on, the cost of energy and what have you, and cost of living going up. But £6 does seem like a lot. Uh, Turbo Stream says, I forgot I had sowed calibres. I did plant out the kale a few weeks ago. I might sow another batch along with the cauliflower in July. Love cauliflower as well. Um, definitely a good one. Now, uh, for the spring onions for overwintering, Ballycillian sows them August, September. So plenty of time to get that prepared. Spring onions is one I, I, I try and sow a lot of. I just never seem to be able to grow enough. That's probably what I need to dedicate for my large veggie pod in the future, growing things like that, thinking about it. Uh, Turbo Stream, the beetroot is finally starting to show. We'll be doing another sowing in July for storage over winter. Beetroot, beetroot, of course. Um, that's one you could sort of grow for winter veg, I guess. Um, I don't know. Do, does anybody get it out of the ground during winter or do you harvest it when you need it? Love chaos, says Scott. I planted. I have some planted and doing well. If I sow more now, I guess it will extend the harvest to late winter. Indeed, yeah, uh, that's the thing with kale is you can sow it up till 
sort of end of July for overwintering. You can sow it up until September, but any later than July, they're not going to get through the winter. But it's worth just worth sowing, I think, in my opinion. So quite a few of them, get them going in, in the ground, and there you go. Uh, Grant says, I'm growing a couple of kale plants in my polytunnel this year. Just hope the cabbage whites keep off them. That is the trouble, isn't it? A lot of our winter vegetables are in the brassica family for obvious reasons. And cabbage whites are always the problem. That's why we, we or one of the problems anyway, that's why we tend to net them to try and keep the cabbage whites off. When you are growing for winter, if like me, where we're trying not to rely on supermarkets, we're trying to have everything growing for our winter crops. You know, cabbage whites can decimate your winter crops. And if, you know, if it wasn't for the supermarkets, we're back in the old days when we relied on it, then we, you know, we would lose our, our winter crops and, and starve throughout the winter. You know, it makes you think when I, when I, you think of things like that, I think anyway. Uh, Jenny says, drizzle kale with oil and sprinkle with salt. Pop in the air fryer for a few minutes. Serve on toast with cream cheese. Yeah, lovely. Uh, Digwell says, I think kale affects people in different ways, like coriander. Some taste it one way, some taste it another. I think you could be right on that. I think it's the same as sprouts. You know, some people <laughs> like it, some people don't. But I also think that it could also be how you cook it as well. I certainly found out with sprouts. Some people overcook sprouts, and then they end up disgusting. So that's the one to to think about how you cook it. Digwell says carrots sown now can be lifted over winter. So get carrots, if you're growing in the ground, get those sown now. I do need to do some more carrots, so I will be doing that myself. Turbo stream. I harvested my first ever spring onions today. They've been in the ground since last year. Supplied myself too. Do find that with spring onions. They can be in the ground for quite a long time. They are a tricky one, I find, too, to get right. I think we judge it by those things we get in the supermarkets, those big, solid, leafy greens. But we don't need it that big, necessarily. You'll need to pick the beetroot before you get much of a frost. We lost the last of ours last year due to frost that's what i thought beetroot you know i know where we are we're not far from chili field we're on the, um and a few others on the south coast here our late frost is pretty late in the season but um still need to lift them beforehand jenny says i've just sown some more carrots dig well deep purple ones um but listen i don't lift my leftover beetroot just cover with straw and harvest as required so that avoids the frost problem cover with straw and harvest as required a bit like an old clamp gary says is there anything i could grow in a polytunnel over winter extra to what i can grow in the allotment that's a good question, actually. I've not got any experience with a polytunnel, but I do have greenhouses. And, you know, you, I'm trying to think, trying to think. Du, 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 du. I mean, you can get earlier sowing to courgettes and things going. Would they survive the winter? Probably not. You can get chilies. It may not produce chilies over winter, but you can get them growing in a polytunnel over winter, certainly. We'll throw that out there for anybody else. Anything that you can grow in a polytunnel over winter and that you can't grow outside. Lettuce is one I was thinking of as well. Uh, Toby Stream says, I kept a few beetroot in a bag in the fridge over winter. I want to find a supply of pinewood chips to store beetroot in the shed. Pop down to the range or, or somewhere like that um and and go to the animal bedding center for pine wood chips uh graham says i could eat sprouts raw they are lovely i'm with you on that i'm with you on that uh jim is also another one that clearly doesn't like like kale either i love it i love the stuff uh interesting uh gary says his neighbors says cucumbers taste like metal to him and i can sort of see what he's saying in some ways uh, Digwell says coriander tastes like soap to me. I have to remove it from the top of an Indian meal. Uh, that that is genetic, isn't it? There's coriander that does, in some people, does taste like soap. So mm. that's a point. Winter herbs, growing herbs throughout winter. I'd like to grow parsley and 
uh, coriander too. Um, we can make a sewing of both of those now. They probably won't get you through the winter, but you know, make another sewing probably September to get you through the winter. Um, herbs, herbs, a good one actually. And that, and even in the polytunnel, I'll probably do okay. Uh, what, what, what have we got? Anne says, I direct sewed stripes. What are stripes? Um, let us know. Turbo Stream, I think beetroot can survive light frosts, but a deep frost turns them to mush. That's my thinking as well. That's why it's probably the same as carrots in that, that field as well, covering them in a mulch just to keep that frost out of them. Worth it. Uh, Belly Sin, as I harvest my potatoes growing in buckets, I sow carrots in the buckets, and when winter arrives, I bring the buckets into the polytunnel to grow on. There you go. There you go, growing in buckets. I'm going to try that this year because I'm struggling with carrots a lot. How about winter lettuce? I usually grow four types in my veggie pod. Winter lettuce, that's a good one. Um, again, when would you sow those? I do tend to send those out, out during the winter. So uh, when would you look at sowing your winter lettuce? Certainly we'll be looking at doing that at the moment. I grow lettuce and peas in the poly over winter, says over winter last year, says Amanda. Lovely to see you, Amanda. Hope you are well. Uh, Jenny, garlic in a polytunnel do well and harvest later. Uh, Charles Dolding has just done a video on what he grows in a polytunnel over winter. Uh, go check that out. Go check that out. Uh, after the show, of course. Don't do it yet. Uh, Monty grows mustards and Asian greens in his polytunnels over winter, in winter. That's a good one as well, Asian greens. Yeah, uh, pak choy and things like that. Good ones. Good ones indeed. Turbo Stream, good tip about the range. Pity my nearest is 10 miles away. I might try the local pet shop. That'll work. Local pet shop will be fine. Uh, I direct sowed red, white, and golden and striped beets yesterday. I love kale, especially in a smoothie. Such a great colour. Yeah. Um, I love, I'm really into my smoothies at the moment for breakfast. I'm going to work with a smoothie every day. Uh, what else have we got? Nigel, if you're struggling to grow spring onions, try a variety called Ramrod. They are a bomb proof. There we go. Yeah, Ramrod. That's one to check out. They are a good one from what I've heard. Um, right. I tell you what, let's go to another video because we've got some good ones today. Um, this one is actually from Canada. Uh, so let's go see what's going on uh, across the pond. So I'm way behind you English gardeners, but I've got lots of things coming on in the greenhouse. Just about to plant these broccoli cheap show or something i bought those as seedlings um i grew these and i'm not sure if the cabbage or kale what the heck are they um it's a long story involving throwing the seeds out and then them <laughs> germinating outside uh, i've got some chickpeas there some big lebanese cucumbers that i bought as seedlings it's cheating really lemon cucumbers Sunflowers, I'm going for my niece and nephew, Brussels sprouts. I don't think they're going to be anything worth looking at before the snow. Loads of squashes. I do love my squash. Oh, Malabar spinach. That's uh, acorn squash from a neighbour. Butternut squash. I've uh, got more somewhere. Maybe the next door. Oh, I've got Christmas lima beans coming up which i got from the seed library let's just look in the next door greenhouse i have got my basil tomatoes oh i've got some loofahs coming they've never amounted to much in the past green hubbard squash then ron denise are those round like balls of courgette which i love Buttercup squash, which I might be doubling up on, and patty pan, which I really love. So, I've just got to get out the greenhouse and get planting. Oh, I'll just show you my uh, drain pipe. I've never done this before. 
peas and beans all germinated in the drain pipe outside and nothing happened to them in the greenhouse. So that's a Vermont cranberry bean. These are perfect purple velvet snow peas. And these are blue podage peas, which looked gorgeous in the photograph. And hopefully they're going to grow over my arches, which I bought on Amazon, and hang down. That's the idea. Oh, <laughs> kind of got lost in there for a moment there. Sorry, everyone. Um, thoroughly enjoying that video, but uh, that was from Anne who's all the way over in Canada. And um, what I love about this is that on the podcast, on this, my audience is very much a UK-based audience, but we do get members of the public, or viewers, listeners, et cetera, et cetera, from, say, Canada, one of my favourite places in the world is Canada, it's got to be said, uh, Croatia, obviously. Um, so I, th I think it's quite good to see what's going on in other parts of the world. This is something I'm hoping we're going to see a bit more of, get the, the odd video from other parts of the world so we compare it to what's going on in the UK and get some ideas of that as well. Uh, thank you so much for that, and Absolutely lovely to see. I know your season has effectively just started, if I remember correctly. So thank you so much for that. On that note, let me tick that off my list on that note um this week on thursday friday i am in at the nec for ghana's world live i know some of you are also going if you are there on thursday or friday i want to try and arrange a meetup i'm thinking most of you if i remember correctly are there on the thursday i'm thinking about three o'clock and uh, we'll meet up by the wheelbarrows and um, that should give us all a chance to get an idea. If you're going there, let us know if that's good with you. Uh, hopefully, I'll, I'll try and record a bit of a podcast and get you guys on it as well, if that is something of interest to you. Um, give us the thumbs up and let us know if that is good. Uh, Gary is saying, thank you for the polytunnel advice. Uh, thanks, everyone. Uh, Stuart says spinach would be a good one for over winter. It's been in my bed all year. My spinach I've had to get rid of now. It um it went over. It was no good. Um, this is a good question. Scott says Xmas spuds, clever marketing or realistic option? Both <laughs> is my honest answer. So. <sighs> You get new potatoes, basically, that you can deliver or you can have on the table for Christmas dinner. For me, Christmas dinner is all about the roast potatoes. I want those delicious, crispy roast potatoes on my table, not new potatoes. I've done it in the past and we got pretty good harvests, to be fair. But for me, I don't think it's it's worthwhile. The thing with new potatoes and eating these Christmas potatoes is that you've got to eat them within a week. They're not like the main crops. And you're going into winter when they really need uh, a, a bit of time. Uh, um, yeah, you've got to be in the mood for them, basically. Uh, I'm, that's my thoughts. I'll just share anybody else with that. Time Stream says, we all need to try making a clamp, the old gardener's way of storing our vegetables. I'm thinking that might be a good thing to try as well, actually. That might be an idea. Uh, what else have we got? A lot of uh, looking good there, Anne. Thanks, Anne. Hopefully they all grow. Looks great, Anne. Um, Anne says, thanks, guys. Ever hopeful. Excellent. Uh, looks great, Anne. Says, Kate. Um and Scott says, great video. Interesting to see the difference to the UK, isn't it, Just That's what I had to go. Um, Nicholas says, did you have a discount code? I'm hoping Thursday, Friday, and possibly Sunday. Uh, I will message you. I'll double check to see if it is sat still there. Um, but I will have a look. I'll, I'll have a look and message you. Uh, Digwell says, never succeeded with second crop in spuds. Marketing hype, in my honest opinion. I'm, I wouldn't say marketing hype, but it worked for me, but I can't say I was excited about them. Gary says, I'll be there Saturday. I was hoping to meet you, Richard, but Saw and Lucy too. Saw and Lucy will be there Saturday. 
Um, mention me and uh, they'll look after you. I mean, they look after everyone. Uh, where, was, where was somebody else? Kate said, I'll be there Thursday, three o'clock at the wheelbarrows. Is that good for you? Um, I think, I think Nigel, Nigel, are you there Thursday as well? Let us know. Um, Scott says 100% agree, roast potatoes all the way in that case. Yeah. Yeah, for me, it's 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 roast potatoes um, all the way. Turbo, I decided against Gardner's World Live. I felt the three ninety five booking fee was excessive this year for an e ticket. Three pound ninety five booking fee. Um, that that's annoying i mean it's annoying that we've got to pay for parking on top of tickets as well a lot of things the parking isn't necessarily gardener's world's fault from what i understand but i'm with you extra 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 digra says where is the wheelbarrow so they're the wheelbarrow gardens they're usually outside the floral marquee um near the oh, that's where they were in the last couple of years near the um oh what What's the gardens called? Not a big display gardens, the small display gardens. Uh, they're usually there. They're usually there. You'll see them. You'll see them. They're normally brightly coloured outside, by near the floral marquee. If you come out of the NEC, the floral marquee in front of you, it's to the left-hand side. There we go. <laughs> usually. Um, Alan Titchmarsh pops his harvested new potatoes in a biscuit tin and buries it. He was taught that from his granddad and does it every year. Didn't know that. Didn't know that at all. Again, it boils down to, do you want new potatoes on your Christmas dinner table or are you happy with roast spuds? It's roast spuds all the way for me, I'll be honest. Just didn't feel quite right having new potatoes on the table, in my opinion. Um yeah, I did, did make a note of new potatoes. Anybody else got any other ideas of winter veg that we need to either start sowing now or start sowing in the next few months? I always think it's it's frustrating um, that many many people will sow seeds sort of March, April, May, but come maybe even into June. But July, I sow seeds all year round, as many of you know. It becomes a bit of a. I think it's a shame that people aren't sowing seeds all year round. I think they 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 tend to save it for that busy time. Um, what have we got? Bally Cillian says it's our garden show Ireland next Friday, Saturday, and Sunday at Atrium Castle Gardens. Good day out. Are you going? If so, can you take some photos or videos and share them with us? That would be great get a good idea of what's going on there gary says i know the feeling i bought nfl tickets at wembley 30 pounds in ir iirc what's iir or iirc what's that mean sorry might be being a slit a bit slow there roast spuds for christmas dinner yeah i'm completely with you it's roast spuds all the way for me um Digra says, I am only going for the food show if it was only the garden show i would not bother as after last year's disappointment I go for I go for both, and it's partly why I'm there for two days. But I, you know, I find this interesting. Your your reaction to the garden shows, um, this is something we might have to discuss. What do you want from a garden show? Uh, NEC are great for mobility issues. They have wheelchairs and mobility scooters to hire up for free. Well planned space and etc. Yes, I'm with you. I think the NEC is a great location. Um, it's just a shame there's no actual gardens there all year round, but that's a, another debate. Roast taties on my Christmas dinner plate goes great with the haggis. Oh, I do like haggis. Do like haggis indeed. Still says, more rain is coming here. My buckets are back out after collecting over 100 litres yesterday, and all three water butts are filling up. To, to use what Digwell said, I can go off people, you know. <laughs> I feel the same about We've got hardly any rain, not enough at all. Scott says, I forgot where I buried the biscuit tin and I'll end up with a strange time capsule. <laughs> yeah. Um, Kate says, I tried to get a wheelchair at NEC, but they are all reserved now, sadly. Well, it, in that high demand that they're reserving all the wheelchairs, that's annoying. Um, 
Yeah, that's a shame. Do you like the haggis in the little whiskey turbo stream? Absolutely. Uh, Anne says, where's spuds on Xmas dinner? Prefer them to turkey. I kind of get what you mean there. Kind of get what you mean there. Uh, let's have a quick look at your photos, shall we? Because there's a good lot of photos that have come in. As always, please do keep sharing your photos in it, whichever way you like to share them. Now, Kate has been harvesting strawberries and lettuce. And I, I, I saw this picture and I immediately thought that strawberries with a bit of balsamic vinegar over a salad works very nicely. It sounds weird, but it does work really well together. You know, nice salad, strawberries chopped up in, balsamic vinegar, delicious. Uh, Stuart, we've been talking about this. He's been maximising the amount of rain that he could catch by potting out lots of buckets to catch as much rainwater as possible. Um, as I said, my water butts barely, barely touch my water butts. So what I like more, didn't get it. Uh, Chris has shared his uh, some plot photos from his plot. And again, this is looking really, really good, I've got to say. Nice amount of young growth going on in those beds in front of a greenhouse. Just looks really, really together. Uh, Scott has got some peas. And this was one of those times that I was going to say I can go off people as well. That being said, I've got a few peas. I've just been struggling with the, the germination on my peas. But we have been harvesting a few peas this week. Um, now, Jenny, this photo came in last week. She went to a garden show last week and found a keyhole bed. I've always been intrigued with a keyhole bed. I've never built one, but I like the idea of it. And there's quite a few different gardens worth look, checking out in the uh, in the Facebook group. Uh, Kate has finally got her first real harvest of strawberries as well. Um, delicious, aren't they? Absolutely delicious. Um they uh, strawberries are just summer aren't they delicious 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 and finally steve has been watching the weather for the summer storms and rain i think many of us are keeping our eye out for the rain at the moment just hoping to get a bit of cooling and a bit of rain water to water our plants and save us a job um now, if you want to keep sharing those photos, then please do. You can email them to me to be in the show by emailing me, richard at vegetarianpodcast.co.uk. You can post them in our Facebook group, or you can send them to me via social media. Either way, or any of those ways, is perfectly acceptable. Um, Scott is saying that the strawberry is great in salad with black pepper. I know it's it, it, it always... I heard it on the radio of having strawberries in a salad, and I was unsure, but I gave it a try. It worked. It was delicious. Uh, Chilly Phil, we've missed most of the rain today. I had a short spell this afternoon, but that's it. The problem with being protected by the Isle of Wight. Yep, yeah, I know, I know. Um, I've been watching the weather all day, and it's saying it's going to rain, it's going to rain, and then it disappears at the last minute, or very disappointing rain. But I would take whatever we get, is all I would say. Um, what else have we got? What else have we got? Um, Digwell, the Malvern show was an expensive show to walk around to be sold overpriced stuff. Anyway, I hope everyone has a good show. Um, yeah, the shows are out there. I think you've got to embrace the shows for what they are in my opinion. You know, there is a lot of sales that go on, but you get a chance to talk to manufacturers when it comes to show. But the, for me, what you're really paying for is the talks. You know, that getting celebrities talking on stage, that for me is is what the shows, are. and the show gardens as well, for that matter. Um, well, well, that's for me what, it, what it's all about. Scott says, sorry, Richard, my beans, on the other hand, free sun so far and no joy was the other way around last year. Yeah. Yeah, beans doing good this year for me. <laughs> Stuart says, please don't block me, but it's raining here. Can you send it our way? I just want a bit of rain. Overnight would be fantastic. I think I've only missed two or three Garners World Live since the first one. It has certainly deteriorated over the years. Definitely displays and stands are half the area they originally were. Are you there on Thursday, Nigel? Um, 
I take your word on that. I mean, I, I've been going every year since 2019, I think. Obviously, 20, was it 2018? 2018, I think, I first went there. Uh, the only one I missed was 2020, because obviously nobody could go that time. But I, I mean, I still like it. I still like the show, but you've got to embrace and get throw yourself in. Uh, Bally, I battered haggis sausage. Oh, nice, nice. And says, I pickled some rhubarb and added to the salad the other day. Pickled in sugar and cider vinegar. Delicious pickled rhubarb. Can you share that recipe, Anne? Because that sounds delicious. I'm going to give that a try. Um, I've done rhubarb with pork. That goes really well together. Another strange combo, strawberry sandwiches with black pepper. Also good. Oh, strawberry sandwiches. You get, I'm going to have to try that as, as well. Uh, strawberries, great in a daiquiri with a decent rum. Mm, oh, yeah. I mean, I'd... I take your word on that. I had daiquiri when I was in St. Lucia, but it was virgin daiquiri because I, I don't drink, as everyone knows. Should have gone with the whole hogs. Oh, deep fried Mars bar. Lovely. Um, I was told the Alan Titchmarsh talk has been the same for two years. I think a lot of people do recycle the same talk, um, which is annoying. I mean, I, um, there's a, uh, 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 let's just explain that, you know, if, and there's a lot of work that goes into the talk. It's not like they just can rock up and, and say what they're going to say on stage. It's a lot of work, a lot of preparation that goes on beforehand and rehearsing as well so that they sound good on stage. So they, I'm not surprised they recycle talks, um, but I always think it's best to have, say, one talk for one year. That's that way. If you're doing Garners World every year, each talk is different each year. Um, yeah, that's all I would say on that. All I would say on that. Uh, Ian says, did you go to the nursery show today? No, I was going to, but I had sod all sleep last night and I was too hot. I decided not to. Did you go, Ian? Was it worth going? And did I miss out? I really wanted to go. I was looking forward to it. I just couldn't bring myself to it. And, and Roxy wasn't right either. Uh, pickled rhubarb, fab idea indeed. Uh, they sell deep fried Mars bars, and like, oh, you're making me hungry. Um, is it too late to sow cucumbers? As after Digwell's plants yesterday, I've been asked for more. Thanks. Um, I think you could get away with it, I would say. I think, yeah, if you do it this week, you'll probably get away with it. Um, but you're gonna need to really bring them on in the greenhouse or something. I'm gonna try it myself, actually, but yeah. How about chicory and endive as winter veg? Not a fan of either myself, too chewy. Chicory and endive, yes. I'll make a note of that. They're good ones. They are more sown much later on in the year, so nothing to worry about just yet, but definitely something to sow a bit later on. Um, I mean, I, I like the stuff myself, but I know, not again, that's one of those things that not everybody is a fan of. Scott says he's probably too busy trying to find all his biscuit tins. Uh, Alan discussed lockdown and filming with his wife when she was behind the camera. Um, did I? I think I did catch some of his talk. If I remember correctly, actually, Digwell, when you last year you were in the seats and myself and Nigel were at the back listening in. Uh, what else have we got? Uh, stream. One of my chicory plants survived in open ground. I might give that a go again this year. Chicory, I, I mean, I like chicory and endive. I think they are great. Or what's the other name? Whitloaf or something, isn't it? That's another name that we can call it. Nicola, strawberry sandwich, not much different than strawberry. Jam. Good point. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yes. Perfectly fine to have strawberry jam. So why wouldn't it be fine to have strawberry jam? Good, good point. Ian says, no, I too did not go as not sleeping, but looks like a go show for bedding plants. I did want to. This is a nursery show. I did want to go to the nursery show. I'll be completely honest. I want to want to get involved. I want to eventually own my own nursery, but I just couldn't just couldn't bring myself to it, and I couldn't leave Roxy on her own either. Bless her. Uh, Toby Stream. I ordered some tunnel kits from Garden Naturally this week. Hopefully, 
to grow winter salads. That's a good point. That's a very good point. We haven't we've we've talked a lot about polytunnels or greenhouse growing, but don't forget cloches for your winter veg as well. Um, I need to recondition my my cloches this year, so I'm going to be cutting those down or getting some uh, corrugated plastic and cut those down to size to get me through the winter this year. So definitely one that I, I'm going to be doing as well. Uh, Jenny, is Roxy okay? Yeah, she's fine. She's just she's been like it for the last few days. It's just because she's so hot. She's a she's a black dog, so she gets hot easily. Anyway, we haven't taken her out on walks or anything like that. She doesn't like water, so it's difficult for her to cool off. And we we you know she just got so hot and she's barking a lot because she's frustrated basically. Um, so she's right. She's all right. I've just been car cooling her down. And doing that. Uh, has anyone said spinach? I think uh, Stuart did say spinach earlier on as well. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but again, spinach is going to be another one. Probably grow those in cold frames or something over the winter as well. Um, yeah. Now, something we have discussed is the butternut squash. And that brings us up with this week's grow along. So let's go have a look at this week's grow along. Right, well, it's time for another grow along. Now, these grow alongs are my way of trying to encourage other people to grow their own food, but also get people who already know how to grow this particular vegetable to share their own tips and tricks. And this week, what we're actually going to be growing is butternut squash. Now, for me, butternut squash is a, a must have. This butternut squash we actually grew last year. We've we, we harvest this probably October, November time. We, the only thing we did is make sure we leave a long stalk when we harvested it and we let it cure for a couple of weeks in the greenhouse before it went into storage. And to be honest, all it's done is sit in the kitchen worktop and it is still absolutely fine. This solid discoloration was there when we harvested it. It's just where it was on the ground. But overall, you know, these butternut squashes absolutely fine i've heard people being able to keep up butternut squashes for about 18 months before so it's a good enough reason to grow them uh, just purely for their storage ability now as i said they are one of my favorite things to grow they've got a nice sweet flavor but also the seeds are a nice easy thing to handle so i just take a single seed and pop it into each single root trainer and I push it in on its side to try and slot it into the ground if you like into the compost. Now at this time of year it won't take long for these to show themselves. A couple of weeks I reckon they'll probably start germinating. We will let them grow probably a, a, another week or two in these root trainers. We will pop them up but I reckon during July, beginning of July, they will have to go in the ground. Probably end up down on the allotment, maybe here at home as well. Now when these grow, they do take up quite a bit of space. As you can imagine, they are a bit like pumpkins. They're a training plant. They are from the same family, the cucurbit family, of course. So they do take up a bit of space, but actually you can train them to grow up upwards, up trellises or something like that. They do need to be strong if they grow up, with strong supports, but on a whole, I, I personally just leave them to trail across the ground and I find them absolutely fine for that. The good thing is, of course, because they, they trail and they've produced some fairly big leaves, they actually work quite well at shading out weeds underneath. So I do tend to try and grow them around things that, that need a bit of shading, shall we say. Underneath my sweet corn is a good example. Now, keep them well watered. They do need somewhere in full sunlight, plenty of organic mix, mixed organic matter mixed into the, the, the bed that they're going to grow in. But well watered, free draining soil, and they should do fine. And feeding about once every two weeks with a tomato feed should also help them turn into flowers and produce some of these fruits that we are after. Around October, November time, you wait for the fruits to turn that solid sort of orangey, beigey colour all the way around, and then it's ready to harvest. As easy as that, really is. So let me know if you do anything different, um, or if you've got any tips or tricks that you know on how to grow butternut squash down in the comments down below. 
obviously keep watching the vlogs to see when these go in the ground and where they end up going. But for now, it's about that squash zone. Here we go, butternut squash, one of my my favourites. As I said, I've got two butternut squashes left over from the last year. And, you know, good chance to sow them, get them sown. I've just seen, you know, Stuart says, just reminded me to sow my butternut squash seeds. And Scott says, sow mine from the supporters pack too. So, yeah, butternut squash is is the grow along for this week go get your sown and any ideas for what we can do for grow along for next week let me know in the comments um is it, I, I, um ian ian McC 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 mccraggan mccorgan I, I, I would not always get your surname right um i know you said i can grow the plant the 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 shark fin melon in your field i've got it growing at the moment i reckon probably won't be next weekend the weekend after that i might be looking at trying to get it over to you if you are available um and i just saw where did i see a comment on that jenny says my fig leaf has still not germinated i've a new packet and started again the company have said they have approximately 40 percent germination rate all the other squash pumpkins are growing well i had pretty good germination on mine i got them from the same company from you i believe and then um, i got about five i sowed a whole lot of seeds to be honest i think i got about five of those plants so um they're getting they're getting pretty big i've got to keep potting them up and up to try and make the space up for them um Ian says yes okay sounds good and Stuart says how about swede for next week swede that's also a winter one that we haven't even mentioned but that's definitely one that i will throw down in fact that's one that I, i'm not not very good at growing swedes so i'm hoping we can get as much information from you guys about that for it uh stuart says thanks richard sorry i can't can't go to the show this week but i'm sure you will have fun but i do think that they want more, more young people to get into garden they must start looking at the price of shows it's 25 to 30 pound is a lot of money that's just for the ticket then there's the fuel to get there there's the parking which I think is a rip-off, I'll be honest. Um, and all this is taken away from money you could be spending inside the show. That's the way I look at it. The more you're spending just getting into the show, the less you're spending in there. Um, I agree. They could make it a lot cheaper. Uh, Jenny says, you can get dog coats that you soak in cold water. It is tight on them, but brings their temp down. My friend's cockapoo loves his. Hope that helps. Yeah, Roxy does not like getting wet at all. Um, she will not go out if it rains. She's almost afraid of water. So it won't do her any good. Because she's Sharpay, Sharpays have a tendency to get sores and bad skin conditions when their, their, their skin gets wet in the folds of her skin. So we think she prepares herself by not getting wet to avoid that. Um, but thank you for the idea. We, we, we'll look into it. But we got calling mats and things. She just doesn't use them. Um, Time Extreme says, I sowed some sp perpetual spinach this week to Bally. Swiss chard. I haven't written that down. Swiss chard is one that we could grow throughout the winter as well. A, uh, um, I find some people do or don't like Swiss chard. I personally quite like it. It's not quite the same as spinach, perpetual spinach. I mean, Swiss chard and perpetual spinach are basically the same thing. And it doesn't wilt down as much. But I still think they are tasty. Um, Scott says Swede. Uh, Bally Sin says, Swede is a staple food here. I have some nearly ready to harvest. I grow it all year round. There we go, Ballison. We'll be calling on your uh, expertise in this particular field next week and on the um, when I pop the video out to let us know how it goes. Now, what I remember, please do give us a like. Please do give us a thumbs up. Please do give us a follow, a subscribe, and don't forget to click the notification so that you know when we go live. Um, Always good, to, always good to get more followers and subscribers. So always, always, always good to do that and get more people joining in the show. 
Uh, Sarah says, my favorite child is one called Lucius. Lucius, Lucius. Leaves got huge, but stay soft. Oh, that sounds good. That sounds very nice. I'll have to check it out. I've been growing a Swiss chard in my garden for about three years. I finally got rid of it this week because it's just gone to, to, to crap. Uh, Jenny says, I have peppermint, magneta, orange, and canary, and giant Ford hook chard yeah i mean i think chard looks great in the garden it's got to be said they just those beautiful different colors um the tasty edible food you know my wife doesn't like them but i i do i do i just she doesn't always know when she hits hits them uh the trip to ghana's world live is costing me close on 400 pound for the two of us okay I have vip tickets but the, the train is 100 pound because of the timings yeah i mean that kind of proves my point. I mean, petrol there and back is going to cost me nearly a hundred quid. You know, it's it's um, just got to try and grow, make the most of it. You know, uh, I grow microgreens for sandwiches and soups. Microgreens, microgreens—that's something I haven't mentioned either. Microgreens. I mean. I love microgreens. I grow those a lot during the winter. Um, and always so worth growing. Anna says, did anyone suggest celeriac? No, we didn't. That's one, again, you need to start. I think it's too late to start, but you might be able to get some celeriac from the garden centre or similar to pot in a garden instead. Uh, at last year's Gunners World Live, the demographic was mainly older people. I think that's a problem. Most of them can afford the ticket and prices, and perhaps they just go, they just accept the cost for it a day out. Got to remember, uh, Adrian, you were there on the Thursday, wasn't it, with me? Um, which is generally when the older people, I uh, feel rude saying that, but um, the people who are no longer in work, shall we say, will tend to go because it's it's they don't have to take a day off work. I think the younger people will probably tend to go more the Saturday and Sunday um, just to balance things out and look at it correctly. Uh, Gary says, I agree about Rainbow Chard. My allotment friend died and we gave a bouquet of it instead of flowers. Love it. Love it. Love it. Absolutely love it. Yes. 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 Um, yes, yes, it's that good, isn't it? You know, those beautiful different colors, yeah. Big bouquet of that instead of flowers, fantastic. Uh, a way of salary, I could forgotten about those. I hope I have watered them. I hope you have too. Uh, nice one, not growing it this year, but as I only need a few, I'm sure I've got some set somewhere. I'm gonna have to check it out. Celery as well, celery again. Needs a long growing period, but it does well. It does well. Um, would that be a winter fit? Yeah, I would say it would. I would say it was. Uh, Graham says, Celeric needs a long growing season. Too late to sow seeds now. Yeah, exactly. I thought it was too late to sow seeds, but I'm sure if you go to a garden centre, you can probably buy some a tray of celeriac or something to plant in. I did see them somewhere. I'm trying to think where. Might have been the range. Might have been the range. Um, Turbo dig where you can park in my drive and get the train from Selly Oak next time. And Wright has joined, only just arrived, so maybe repeating someone else. I grow several types of winter squash to store. We've spoken about butternut squash, but yeah, winter squash, butternut squash, acorn squash, uh, pumpkins, of course, good forms of it. Um, <laughs> Gary said, you know, we were happy to pay for a one-off, but wouldn't pay that every year. We need a hotel too, so pound, 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 pound. Yeah, I mean, I I, I stay my camper van, my, my, that how I keep the costs down, and I find a park up, um, which I, I'm hoping to find this year, and I just leave in that. So that's how I cut the costs down. Um I sow pak choy this week too. Hopefully that will grow for winter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pak choy will be ready well before the winter, I'll be honest with you. To get it grown for the winter, you really look in sort of September because it's quite a quick crop. But 
it's still one to grow as the Asian Greens. Saturday at the NEC is a dearest, a bit of profiteering there. Yeah, it's the most popular day. Um, that, and that's why. I mean, I think Sunday is the best day to go. And this is a little trade secret. Sunday is towards the end of the show is when like, the buzzer goes off and people just sell things off cheap to get rid of them because they don't want to take it home. Um, but Saturday is the most popular day and they want to try and spread it out. That's what's going on there and kind of makes sense. It does make sense. I'm not defending the costs or the prices because I think it should be cheaper. But there we go. There we go. Uh, we are doing the VIP so that we can have a day on the source. Yeah, indeed, indeed. Well, guys, um, I'm going to start suggesting. So what I've started doing, as I demonstrated last week, is just writing a list of a few topics that we can cover each week. And I want you guys to choose what we are going to do next week. So the one that I, I'm thinking that would be a good one to do is rainwater harvesting slash efficient watering in the summer, because that's something we are all dealing with at the moment. But the other options I have got uh, compost making and do you make enough compost for yourself? Uh, use and grow your own to help lose weight. Smoothie recipes is an idea I came up with. And green manures. They're the, the topic suggestions I've got. That's five suggestions of topics that I want to cover at some point. Over to you guys to decide which one you would like to do. Um, Sorzenia. Oh, that. Yeah, that's the one that's meant to taste like oysters, isn't it? And... I can't think what it's called. I don't know what you're talking about. It's it's quite a it's I think it's quite an acquired taste um, and difficult to grow, from what I understand. Um, Malvan shows charge fifty pound for Thursday, but it's still twenty five pound on a Sunday plus booking fee and travel. It is a lot of money. It is a lot of money, and with the cost of living, it's it's a shame. Um, Uh, what else have we got? Um, Bally ceiling says, depending on the size of your poly tunnel, you have to remember it has to be cleared out for spring sowings. So better not to grow long season plants. Yeah, I think this comes down to experience. Though. As I said earlier, when we were talking about my new potatoes come out, my first early potatoes and leeks, and even some of my winter cabbage will go in that bed afterwards. And then say my second earlies, as they are... Um, coming out you know i want to plant them back up with things almost straight away uh gary says all topics are interesting richard watering most relevant to me right now that's the one i'm leaning to as well so i um, um so yeah we're, we're, it looks like the watering is out in lead because jenny said watering ideas would be good but all great topics you know, these topics aren't going to go away. We're going to cover them at some point. You've just got to try and time it with what you guys want to cover. Uh, Graham is saying, is anyone else getting blanket caterpillars on their fruit tree this year? I've never had it before until this year. Can't say I have, but I'll ask anybody else. Are you getting blanket caterpillars on your fruit trees? Um, so... Salsify root is one that tastes like oyster, alternative to par parsnips. Yes. Um, indeed, you're right. Indeed, you're right. Yes, yeah, Salsify. Sorry, not the Scorzini or whatever it's called. The one I was, I was thinking of Salsify. Um, <laughs> no, Nigel was saying, forget the ticket and have extra money for the sauce. Uh, but then you need the excuse. You need to the excuse to go on the sauce. Same with all my beds, really. I may not do garlic in, again as I need the space. I harvested my, my early white garlic last night. There's a video coming out on that later this week. I'm really pleased with it, I've got to say. Not the hugest bulbs, but I'm really pleased with it. Um, also, maybe adapting our plots for the season, the new heat we seem to be getting, maybe to make some shade and snakes. 
Um, yeah, um, how we, uh, what do they call it when you're landscaping your garden, drought tolerant and et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Stuart says watering is a um, great idea. I was surprised by how many people didn't know about water courgette from the bottom yesterday. Okay, I think that the watering, rainwater slash summer watering, um, is going to be the one to go through next week. Um, I meant to put swales, shade swales deeper, etc., to cope with changing weather. So I've heard a lot about swales. That's basically a ditch on contour. Um, We'll, we'll get into it. We'll get into it and we'll see if we can get somebody who knows a bit about it. Might be the best way to go. Uh, what else have we got? What else have we got? Got a couple of minutes before we wind up. Do I wait till my winter onions fall over before I harvest? White onions are nearly ready. Don't want them to bolt. Um, if they are overwintered onions, they probably are bolted, to be honest. Just snap off the flower spike as soon as you see that flower spike. You can use those flower spikes like spring onions. You usually do wait for most of them in the bed for those stems to fall over before you harvest them. So, yes, is my answer to that. Um, but, yeah, just snap off those flower spikes. Uh, Scott says, I'm just going to grow elephant garlic next. The only one you can't get in the shops, normal garlic, cheap in shops and takes up space for a long time. I love growing garlic, personally. I mean, I grow a lot of garlic so that we can have it all year round. But yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, elephant garlic, you're right. You very rarely see elephant garlic in the in the shops. Uh, on that note, Stuart's also saying, have you harvested your garlic yet, Richard? Mine is looking good. I've only harvested my, um, it's called extra early white garlic. That's the only variety because uh, I got that from a garlic farm and they said, you want those lower two leaves to dry out before you harvest them. And they've done that. So I harvested it. The rest of the garlic won't come out until probably the 24th of June. After the longest day, I've been watching a lot of Charles Dowden's videos on har harvesting garlic, so I'm timing it for that. Um, but my my extra early white garlic, I'm really pleased with, really pleased with. You'll see that on a video later this week. Uh, Tesco garlic, 30p a bulb, but I love growing garlic. I do love growing garlic. It's one of those things, the beds being used over the winter is the way I look at it. <laughs> and then you know, garlic is good for plaiting and hanging in your kitchen and impressing your friends. Absolutely. Absolutely agree with that. Um, is that. Um, else, what else have we got? What else have we got? I think that is. Yeah. Um, oh, Bally Slim. I never have enough room, but I like them beds in your garden. I will check your page for a link for my own home garden. Well, I've conversation and gone from that. 24th of June sounds good, as I am away the week before with school. Thank you. Yeah, what you generally find with garlic is that they will grow until the longest day, the 21st of June, and then that's when they stop to grow. Um, and it's a very it's a very tricky time to get it right as to if you leave them in the ground for too long they they don't store very well they spit and they look awful so you've got to get that timing just right uh right graham arnold is, is saying cheers all great show have a good week and stay hydrated turbo stream says another good show everyone have a great week and at gardeners world live indeed we will be back again next sunday at 6 p.m as always we're going to be talking about rainwater 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 and summer watering efficient watering and what we can do um if you if we have it um digwell says garlic bulbs stop growing if they get too much rust which is what's happened to mine but uh, 
we're going to try and beat the rust we're going to try and beat the rust next year anyway guys um hope you've enjoyed this show as i said once again please to give us a like a thumbs up and a follow and a subscribe we will be back again next sunday 6 p.m and as i said anybody going to garner's world uh live on the thursday or friday get in touch and try and arrange a meetup that we can all get together have a bit of a chat about the day etc etc you take care guys i'll see you again at that next time <laughs>